Good evening, Pokemon Pit Beta. My name is Etika, and I uploaded about three other battles to the Pokemon Pit. And uh, my last battle involved the Dragonair. It was fairly recent, so you might remember if I describe it. And it was a Dragonair, and um, it was a fun match. And it was battling an Eevee team. And so, um, although I did get a lot of positive reaction from that battle, I also seemed to receive a lot of negative reaction as well, based upon the fact that I didn't exactly demonstrate any competitive skill, basically. I had a, another battle on the Mosh Pit, actually, that um, had me doing a little bit more of a competitive edge thing, but I figured instead of resulting and going to old things, I might as well come back with a new thing. So I'm battling someone today named Nick. I'm not exactly sure of his YouTube name, but it'll be in the video title by the time this is done. And um, I went in there with my brand new team. This team functions mostly off of Basculin, because I believe Basculin, well, I call mine Scurvy, is actually a wonderful Pokemon. And its ability makes it quite a heavy hitter as well. Anyways, um, the main threats that I'm looking at right now on his team will definitely be the Dragonite, the Caracosta, especially the Cresselia. I, I need to get that thing toxic ASAP. So that will be the first and major goal of the team. Get Cresselia toxic. If I can pull that off, then I definitely won't have anything that can wall my team. Because my team's a little bit more on the offensive side. I actually made a mistake and bought Lapras when I should have bought Aito. <laughs> Anyways. Let's go. Or Durant in the English name. Anyways, this should be fun. you would know that I usually lead with the superior anyways. I wanted to make sure that no setups were happening here, so I went in, taunted, and stopped that. But here comes this Cresselia. Remember, the team's major goal here is to have it toxic. Luckily enough for me, my Wormadom trash version is able to get Cresselia toxic. I don't know if he saw that coming or not, but I'm still not convinced that the job is done. Cresselia might have rest, and that'll be bad. So he goes into Caracosta, and... I don't want to have Pinocchio take any unnecessary damage, so I switch out, and I go into my superior, my Calm Minding superior. Now this is different from my other ones. It has Calm Mind, and it has Giga Drain. Now, that'll be a good combo to help me get back health in the long run, and I have defense EVs as well, so um, I'm trying to scare this Caracosta out, and I don't think that he's going to go for the attack, so luckily he switches out. He goes back into the Cresselia, and I just decided to be bold and go for the attack straight off the bat. I mean, at least it would damage anything that's coming in, and it would give me a little bit more health at the end of the day, too. This Cresselia is toxic, though, so I'm really feeling good about this match so far, but only time will tell if it has rest or not. He goes for the Ice Beam, and I predicted that very nicely, and go into Pinocchio. And Pinocchio, if you're not exactly sure of the typing, or I should say Wormadam S, it's actually a bug and steel type, and Wormadam S has served me as one of the greatest members of my Pokemon teams in history, because Wormadam S has an incredible setup move pool. I mean, but anyways, so I go for the um, Stealth Rock on his um, Switch, and he has the Toxic Spikes, so I was a little worried about that, but I wanted to get something in on the Toxic Spikes on the first layer before the second layer comes in. And he goes for the rapid spin, getting rid of my entry hazards, so um, that kind of defeats the purpose of me setting up in the first place. But I have my rain dance up. And if you're not sh sure about it, um, Amistar also gets swift swim, so I'll be moving pretty fast in these next few coming turns. And I go for a shell smash, if I remember correctly, and um, basically the match is about to get into a really, really critical zone. Because, you know, it has the sturdy ability. Instead of attacking me with the Earthquake, though, he takes this time to set up some spikes, which was very smart in his move, and I, I thought that was really smart as well. He's trying to set up things to be able to take me down later on in the match. So this is getting really intense. <laughs> Star, one hit K 
KOing Dragon Knights with multi-scale like it's nothing. I mean, it's really impressive. It's a surf in the rain with the Shell Smash from the Amistar with the stab and the highest special attack of all non-legendaries does an immense amount of damage to Snorlax. And I go for the surf again and um, I'm able to take him out. So um, I have a pretty good foothold in the match so far, but um, he actually has a quite a good foothold in the match himself. First off, Escarga's dead. Second, he has a shit ton of entry hazards up. And third, <laughs> well, he has a shitload of entry hazards up. So um, it's not exactly going to be a good thing if I stay in here. So I go back into Pinocchio. He predicts sort of well, but I'm not exactly, but good enough. He goes for the Aura Sphere, because I guess he thought I would switch, because there's no way Gyarados would stay in our Raikou. And um, I stay in, and I'm able to take the hit quite well, and I go for the Stealth Rock. And then he just finishes me off with the Aura Sphere. I was hoping for a miss. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Anyways, I go back into Kudalanix. And Kudalanix, um, I wanted to sort of see if he was bluffing the choice item. But um, he wasn't, actually. He switches out. So he must be choice scarred. That's what I'm thinking. And I just switch out of Kudalanix and I go into Conceited. Because Conceited, I was able to scare out Caracosta before. So I'm guaranteeing I'll be able to do it again. So hopefully this exchange goes well, but he pulls right out and goes back into Cresselia. I don't want Cresselia resting or getting HP somehow, so I'm going to taunt it and hope that it stops it from healing up. And so my fingers are crossed here. with Cresselia went rather well and I was able to stop it from using Moonlight and um, any Cresselia which can't heal is a damn good Cresselia in the first place so I just take this chance to start using some Calm Minds to get my special defense up so I can tango with this Cresselia. I'm planning on absorbing its HP to add to my um, to add to my Conceited so this way I'll be able to um, take out the Caracosta with the Giga Drain next turn. And so the poison is definitely doing its job here. And um, I Giga Drain once more, and it doesn't exactly kill, but um, it, it got close enough. And his Ice Beam, I got the Calm Mind ready, so there's no way this is... Okay, so um, basically, I have um, Kudalanix left, and I have my um, Basculin left, and I cannot wait to show Scurvy off to you guys. So, um, wait, oh, I also have Gwyneth left, too. The wrong Pokemon I bought for this team. Ha! <laughs> Stab? It's definitely going to hurt, but my Gwyneth has maximum special defense and a pretty good HP stat. So I'm able to hit him with the two-hit combo. I want to be able to hit him with an Earthquake and then hit him with an Ice Shard. So this way, my next Pokemon can come in and have a much easier time cleaning up. So that's mainly the reason. This was a Dragon Dance Lapras, but I forego this one for my um, Cursing Lapras, so that's why that one is not used anymore. Anyways, I go into Scurvy, and Scurvy has the ability Adaptability, the ability Adaptability, the, the, the ability Adaptability, and with it, I'm able to take Raikou out with the Aqua Jet. And so that goes down pretty well, and then the last Pokemon is the um, Caracosta. I hit Caracosta up with the Aqua Tail, and um, it does a pretty good amount. I mean, if you consider Caracosta's defense, then you will definitely acknowledge that that was a very good amount of damage done. And so Scurvy goes down, and finally Kudalanix is left. And so to finish the match off, um, I know there's no way he can really win it. I have the Intimidate, I lower his attack, and so even if he hit me with the Stone Edge, it wouldn't kill. And I have HP EVs as well. And so that's the match. A mighty fun battle, if I do say so myself. That was really, really entertaining. And um, not only entertaining for myself, though, I truly hope that for all the people that are viewing this video, it was entertaining for you as well. 
Anyways, I really do appreciate that you um, took the time to watch the video, and um, please continue to support the Poke Mosh Pit as well. I believe what they stand for is a very noble cause. I mean, there's plenty of YouTubers out there who don't exactly get the shine that you could say they deserve, and so I've seen a lot of YouTubers now on the Poke Mosh Pit beta that um, I'm following now on a regular basis, and I mean... I'm not trying to say, you know, I'm trying to become big or whatever, but I just hope that I'm able to leave the Pokemon community with something that'll make them smile sometimes, you know? It feels good to have people say that my videos are entertaining. So um, just come on by and watch them whenever you want. You know, I'll try to upload on a regular basis. And um, please continue to support the Mosh Pit beta as well. I mean, there's so many other people that deserve shine here. And um, it's definitely great exposure, and it's definitely a great audience as well. Um, if you have any comments or questions or concerns about the team that I have or um, anything else, I mean, you want to ask me anything, I mean, what color socks I wear, whatever, you know, how big my dick is or something like that, um, just go ahead and um, ask, or you can just add me on Facebook, but whatever the case may be, I'll talk to you guys later and have a good one, Pokemon Pit Beta. It's always entertaining serving you guys, I swear to God.